what's worse than math? Prison. Today we're talking about how the criminal justice system uses math to predict criminal behavior. First off, America has a ton of people in prison. In 2013, one out of 110 adults were locked up, and a disproportionate amount of those are people of color. In 2010, black men were six times more likely to be behind bars than white men. If you've heard the term mass incarceration, it's referring to these high prison rates. And keeping so many people in prison costs a lot of money and contributes to racial inequalities in America. So there's a big push from both Democrats and Republicans to find ways to reduce the prison population while making sure the public stays safe. And some areas of law enforcement are turning to computer algorithms to help them do that. Computer algorithms are all around us. They're basically formulas used to do stuff, like predict what movies you like. And that's exactly what Netflix does. Netflix uses algorithms to track what you watch. They match your viewing habits with the database of users and make predictions on what movies and TV shows you'll like based on what people who've watched similar things to you have liked. One of these is not like the other. Try to Paddington get in there. But instead of predicting what you want to watch, the justice system uses algorithms to predict if you'll recommit a crime. These algorithms are called risk assessment tools. And here's how they're used. Okay, let's say you've been convicted of a crime. You're serving your time in prison and now you're up for parole. You would have what we call a parole hearing where a group of people, a parole board, decides if you'll get out. And parole boards are typically made up of former law enforcement professionals like, you know, police, prosecutors, and prison guards. At the hearing, they ask you questions to try to figure out if you understand why you committed the crime and if you have any strategies to prevent yourself from doing it again. They also consider things like your behavior in prison and if you've gone through any prison programs like AA or anger management. And they use all this information to decide if you're ready to be released. Basically, they wanna make sure that if you get out, you're not gonna go and commit another crime. But parole boards are made up of humans and we all come with bias. And a person's own biases might influence if he or she thinks you'll go on to commit another crime. And this is where risk assessment tools come in. Essentially, the tools use data to predict how likely you are to recommit a crime. And they make those predictions a lot like Netflix does. But instead of tracking what you're watching, they're looking for risk factors and are filled out a lot like questionnaires. They often take into account things like your age, your past criminal record, your education level, where you live, and if you've ever had any drug or alcohol problem. Some of these tools go deep. Here are some actual questions from one of them. How much do you agree or disagree with these statements? A hungry person has the right to steal. Some people don't deserve any respect and should be treated like animals. If someone insults my family, friends, or group, they are asking for trouble. And I don't even know how I'd answer some of these questions. The algorithm then compares your answers to a database of past offenders. Those past offenders have been tracked over time to see if they went on to commit another crime. So if a lot of people who share your risk factors have committed another crime, you'd be considered high risk. And parole boards can use this info to help decide if they'll let you out. For example, they'd be more likely to release a low-risk offender. And compared to professional opinion alone, research shows that in a variety of settings, well-validated risk assessment tools do a better job of predicting behavior than professional opinion alone. This is encouraging because depending on how they're used, they could help wind down mass incarceration. For example, we could keep low-risk offenders out of prison or let them out of jail early. But risk assessment tools aren't without controversy. Just like how you're not gonna like 100% of your Netflix recommendations, these tools can't predict with 100% certainty if you'll commit another crime. And while race is not explicitly included as a risk factor, some people fear that tools could contribute to racial biases already seen in the criminal justice system. For example, police tend to arrest black men for marijuana possession at a much higher rate than white men, even though the two groups use it the same amount. So if arrest rates are considered as a risk factor, it's possible the tools could disproportionately affect black people. And for the most part, a lot of these tools haven't been studied to see if they show racial bias. At the end of the day, no predictive algorithm is perfect. They're only as good as the people writing them and the data sets that they're based on. And it's not clear yet what impact these tools have on racial disparities in our criminal justice system. This is why so many people want greater oversight and more testing. And now we wanna hear from you. What questions does this raise for you? Throw some out there and we'll see if we can answer them.